Okay, here's the situation. You want to write an equation for a line when you know the slope of the line and you don't know the y-intercept, but you do know at least one point on the line. You can't use slope-intercept form if you don't know what number to put in for b. But you can use point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So the m stands for the slope, just like it does in slope-intercept form. And the x sub 1 and y sub 1 stand for the coordinates of any particular point on the line then the plane x and the plane y are the variables in this equation. So the parts that are kind of orangey, just copy those over exactly. The parts that are in gray, those you're gonna replace with the specific numbers that you're working with. So for example, if the slope of a line is three and one of the points on the line is negative seven, two, we can take that point slope form, put three in place of m, put negative seven in place of x1, and put two in place of y1, and it will look like y minus two equals three times x minus negative seven. Only instead of writing minus negative seven, we would probably just write plus seven because subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. Now, once we have that written down, we could distribute to get rid of the parentheses, multiply this out, and write y minus two equals three x plus 21. And if we want y by itself, we can add two to both sides, y equals three x plus 23. And if we want it in function notation, f of x equals something. Well, once you've got it solved for y, the y is equal to what the function is. So we could just write, instead of y equals 3x plus 23, f of x equals 3x plus 23. Now notice that f of negative 7 would be 3 times negative 7, which is negative 21 plus 23, which is positive 2. So this point does work in this equation. f of negative 7 equals 2. So when x is negative 7, the y that goes with it does equal 2. So let's try another one of these. Write an equation for the line with slope negative 3 that passes through the point 1, 5. So we have the two things we need to use point-slope form to write the equation. We have the slope, and we have the x and y coordinates of a point. So just put them where they go in point-slope form. Can you see what that's going to look like? It's going to be y minus, which number goes here? 5, because that's the y coordinate, equals, what number goes here? negative 3, because that's the slope, times, in parentheses, x minus, what number goes here? 1, because that's the x-coordinate of the point. So y minus 5 equals negative 3 times x minus 1. Now, if we want the parentheses out of the way, if I multiply this out, y minus 5 equals negative 3x, and then a minus 3 times a minus 1 would be plus 3. Then I could add 5 to both sides and get y equals negative 3x plus 8. So in function notation, that would be f of x equals negative 3x plus 8. Write an equation for the line with slope 1 half through the point 9, negative 3. So in place of y1, we put negative 3. In place of m, we put 1 half, and in place of x1, we put 9. y minus negative 3, so y plus 3, equals 1 half times x minus 9. 
without the parentheses, y plus 3 equals 1 half x minus 9 halves, because 1 half times 9 is 9 halves. And then if I subtract 3 on both sides, well, over here I'm subtracting 3, but to be able to combine these, they need to have the same denominator. So I'm going to write 3 as 6 halves, 6 over 2. And then the minus 9 halves, minus 6 halves, together makes minus 15 halves. So y equals 1 half x minus 15 halves. In function notation, that would be f of x equals 1 half x minus 15 halves. Now, what if you have two points? After all, two points determine a line. For two points, there's only one line that goes through both of those points. How would you find an equation for such a line? Well, it's a two-step process, or maybe three steps. Step one, calculate the slope of the line. The way you do that is you take y-coordinate minus y-coordinate on top, divided by x-coordinate minus x-coordinate on the bottom. That's how you calculate the slope. Then once you know the slope, you take that slope and either one of the points and stick them into point slope form. And then you can rewrite the equation in a different form if you want. So let's try this. Write an equation for the line that passes through the points 4, 5 and 6, 15. Then use function notation to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So f of x equals mx plus b, whatever that turns out to be. So the first thing we have to do is calculate the slope. We're going to be taking y-coordinate minus y-coordinate over x-coordinate minus x-coordinate. So the second number from each pair goes on top. We're subtracting those. The first number from each pair those go on the bottom. We're subtracting those on the bottom. So this would be 15 minus 5 over 6 minus 4. That works out to be 10 over 2. 15 minus 5 is 10, and 6 minus 4 is 2. And then 10 over 2, 10 divided by 2, would just be 5. So now we know the slope. The slope is 5. Now we're ready for the point-slope form. We're putting 5 in for m, and then in place of the x1 and the y1, we can use either the 4 and the 5, or the 6 and the 15. Our choice. I decided to use the first point, so y minus 5 equals 5 times x minus 4. Without the parentheses, that would be y minus 5 equals 5x minus 20. Add 5 to both sides, and we get y equals 5x minus 15. Then what would that be in function notation? This is easy. All you have to do is write f of x equals 5x minus 15. Now, if you want to check, we can check that if you take this formula and plug in the x-coordinate from either one of these points, it should give you the y-coordinate that goes with it. So if you plug in 4 f of 4, 5 times 4 is 20, minus 15 is 5. And if you plug in 6, f of 6, 5 times 6 is 30, minus 15 is 15. Let's do another one of these. Write an equation for the line that passes through the points negative 2, negative 3, and negative 5, 9. Then use function notation to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So the slope would be second number minus second number over first number minus first number. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 9 minus negative 3 over negative 5 minus negative 2. Careful with all those minus signs. 9 minus negative 3 would be 12. And negative 5 minus negative 2, that would be the same as negative 5 plus positive 2, that would be negative 3. So 12 on top over negative 3 on the bottom, 
Well, a positive divided by a negative comes out negative, and 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. Sometimes your slope is going to come out to be a fraction. Sometimes it's an integer, whatever it is, we can work with it. Here it came out to be negative 4. So we put that in for m, and then I used negative 2 for the x1 and negative 3 for the y1. And whenever I had minus a negative, I just wrote that as plus a positive. So y plus 3 equals negative 4 times x plus 2. Without the parentheses, y plus 3 equals negative 4x minus 8. And then to get y by itself, undo the plus 3 by minusing 3 on both sides, subtract 3 on both sides, and y equals negative 4x minus 11. So in function notation, that would be f of x equals negative 4x minus 11. And you can check that f of negative 2 equals negative 3, and that f of negative 5 equals 9. One more of these. This time we're looking for the line that passes through the points 4, 6, and negative 7, 6. The slope would be 6 minus 6 over negative 7 minus 4. Well, 6 minus 6 would be 0. Negative 7 minus 4 would be negative 11. And 0 divided by any other number would just be 0. So the slope turns out to be 0. Now let's see what we get if we put 0 in for m, and 4 for x1 and 6 for y1. y minus 6 equals 0 times x minus 4. Well, without the parentheses, if we multiply that out, we just get 0 times x minus 0. That's just a big 0. 0 times anything is just 0. And then to go from y minus 6 to just y, I can add plus 6 to both sides. So y equals 6. So that's it. Whatever y equals, that's what f of x equals when we write the function notation. So f of x equals 6. What's going on here? Well, this is a function where no matter what we put in for x, we always get the same thing out, 6. f of 4 is 6. f of negative 7 is 6. f of anything is 6. And what does this look like graphically? Well, here's where 4, 6 is. Here's where negative 7, 6 would be. The line that goes through those two points is just a horizontal line. It just goes right straight across, and every point on this line has a y-coordinate of 6. So no matter what x is, y, or f of x, is 6.